here to meet Mike and Barb. They need some help liquidating Mike's late brother's estate. Apparently, he was a huge collector, and they're just too overwhelmed. So, well, all right. Well, my brother-in-law, Mike's brother, passed away um, a couple months ago. He was a great collector of a variety of different things. Jimmy lived his life collecting, so the entire house is full of all of his collections. There's a lot of memories attached. Well, I'm ready for the nickel tour. Okay, okay. all right. It all started in here. This was his tool room. There's he, a lot of tools in there. there. There's a lot of tools. <laughs> Exposure to his grandfather's woodworking tools fired a lifelong passion in Jimmy for collecting metal files that grew into amassing many other workshop devices, including dozens of manual drills, screwdrivers, and everything beyond, including established brands like Craftsman and Black & Decker. Pieces range from a few months to several decades old. The whole collection would go for well over $2,500, but individual items are likely to go for anywhere from $5 to $75. Oh my goodness. More collections than here. Beer taps. I think he told me he had over 500. Wow. All right, let's go see the living room. Okay, this, this is it. a cool globe. I've seen these before. Not only is it a globe, this is a bar. <laughs> oh my goodness, I didn't even know that. Isn't that cool? And actually it's decorated inside <gasps> too. Oh, is that pretty? Greaves and Thomas is the only company in the world to specialize in historical facsimile globes. This 20 inch diameter reproduction not only features illustrations of make-believe lands, astrological symbols, and angry sea monsters, there's also a wet bar hidden inside. New Greaves and Thomas globes can cost upwards of $1,300, meaning even this well-kept reproduction will likely be a hot sale item. This was Jimmy's office. Another jam-packed room. Oh wow. my goodness, yes. This was one of his prides and joys. And he liked it because it had all these little teeny tiny places where he could put more treasures. This reproduction roll-top desk is similar to models that were a mainstay of professional offices at the turn of the 20th century. The roll-down sheet of linked wooden slats is called the tambour. The roll-top desk gradually fell out of favor with the coming of correspondence and larger envelopes, which made the small stacked drawers and small shelves obsolete. Even though the two parts of this item aren't an original set, the antique ambience of the desk is likely to shine through in the sale. This is what we call the train room. Wow. I know. <laughs> this is a serious collection. Not one is a duplicate. This is probably the most trains I've seen in one area. Oh, I know. And one home <laughs> at one time. So this is the kitchen area. Nice yellow cabinet. Does this have a story? It came from some property that my parents owned in northern Michigan. It was in the garage. It's a great piece that came out of the garage. Mike and Jimmy's parents rescued this classic 1960s hutch from a dilapidated shed and refinished it themselves in a wood grain veneer that was popular until the 1980s. Typically, the upper cabinet is used to display ornate china or glassware and keep it from gathering dust. Hutches of similar size and condition have been seen at auction for anywhere between $200 and $500. Well, I think that I have my work cut out for me. <laughs> I'll bring back my team and we're gonna get started. There were so many items, so many collections. It's gonna be a huge sale. This house is jam packed from wall to wall and actually floor to ceiling in some spaces. I brought lots of help with me today, including my stepdad and my dad, because there are so many tools here. This is a major collector. You name the tool, it's here. I got the perfect tool for you, a loose tooth. Come here, I'll get it. I'll get it for you. Jimmy collected everything, clocks, globes, beer taps. So I wasn't surprised when we found his Barbie dolls. Aww. Dun, 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 dun. You're getting married on another planet. Jimmy caught Barbie fever when he was young from his little sister and turned the dolls into one of his most impressive collections. Invented by Mattel Toy Company co-founder Ruth Handler in 1959, 
the internationally popular doll is currently on sale in more than 150 nations around the world and has had more than 80 different careers. Everything from rock star to soldier to astronaut and even presidential candidate. This Barbie collection is guaranteed to be a centerpiece of the entire sale. We've already had calls about the collections that are here. I have a feeling we are going to have a huge turnout. My estimate for this sale is fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. It's day one of the collections galore sale. We have a huge lineup. It's going to be a great day. Are you ready for this I chaos? Don't know. It's going to be crazy. If I have to count past ten, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All right, house, let's do it. How you doing? Garage and 10 here. Tool room is right here. We would barely opened the doors, and people descended on the tool rooms. Those customers knew what they were looking for. It's going to fall on my head. They were digging around. At one point, all you could hear were just the tools clanking as people were piling them in their bags. This one's $180. What did he get for 180 He uh, tools. This is an antique Stanley router. This is from the turn of the century. And, and we both uh, got one. And we both got one. Give me for this cable I'm looking at $460. Sounds great. OK. All right. All I'm right. give you a uh, slip. Can I interest you in this bar? <laughs> <laughs> the dream bow, Barbie? Uh, I don't you think it's so right No. Now. I'll do uh, 125 for the whole box. Kari put me in uh, charge of the trains. She challenged me to sell them. Give me a price on that. How about 40? 40 for the boat? Yeah. It's okay. All right, doesn't matter. All right. <laughs> Look at that. There's, oh. those, there's lots oh. left. Don't worry. Oh. Let's see what's in here. How about 20 for all this? Done. And then we'll do 10 on each of these. Okay. In here we have 380. Out there you have 980. Because you total 1360. Not bad. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. No problem. Mo was nonstop today with those trains. I don't think he took a break all day. It's halfway through the day, and after a fantastic start, Kari's goal is to liquidate, get it out, and get lots of sales. Eight. Awesome. Thank you Thank much. You. But first, Kari steps away from the sale and heads home to get an important piece from her own collection appraised. I'm waiting on furniture expert Bill Witkowski to come over and take a look at a piece I picked up a few years ago. This dower chest, I loved it. I thought I could double my money, so I'm hoping I'm right. Frequently known as hope chests, dower chests were seen as early as the 14th century and used by women to store items like linens, clothes, and china in preparation for their marriages. The chests were wooden trunks, often ornately decorated with hearts, tulips, and a symmetrical tree of life. The tradition of dower chests was thought to have come to America with a wave of German immigrants settling in Pennsylvania in the early 1680s. Chests from this period and region have sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Kari imagines hers to be worth no more than $4,000. It's, it's a really nice dower chest. It's got really nice wear on the top. It hasn't really been abused, and it's got some really nice shrinkage over here. If you look at the little gap here between the moldings, and that's because of the climate change and the top has shrunk. The color of the backboards, they're kind of dark. They haven't been stained, but they've just darkened from oxidation. And as we move around to the front, the three drawers, very nicely made. And then as we look into the dovetailing, we can tell it was handmade. Then as we look at the bottom, look at the coloration. The bottom was exposed to the air, so this color is about right, but it's not dark enough to be 18th century. Okay. Then as we look really close, we look here. Here's a nail. In 18th century, it would have been a handmade nail. Let's take a look and see what's inside. This hinge is just a little loose. Yeah, and that's pretty common, and that's not a problem. If we look at this screw, there's no point on it. So this was made somewhat by hand and somewhat with a machine, pretty much reinforcing our 19th century look. I found an actual other oh, dollar wow. chest. That's really similar, isn't it? And this one is Allen County, Ohio, 1845. Now the big question, what do you think it's worth? The value of this chest is 3,000 to 3,500. That's fantastic. <laughs> and it's a wonderful piece. Wow, I'm really impressed with Bill's knowledge. Not gonna sell this one. This piece is staying in my home. 
How about five bucks? One of our customers was the president of a doll club, so she was really happy to see those collections. We'll do Nurse Barbie. Okay. 15. Okay. These two, 15. And these two for 15? Yep. Okay, wonderful. So, good stuff I have here today. $115 worth. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I was playing with it. What do you think? You want to take it home? Come on. What are you I thinking? 95. 100 bucks, it's yours. Okay. Sold. <laughs> Done. It's yours. We sold the unique globe bar. I was glad to see that go to a good home. That was Lone Star's from Texas. My sister's from Texas. So. Sweet. I'll give you the whole set for 15. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Your grand total is $175. Thanks, Scott. Well done. Thank you very much. All right. Things are selling, but I'm going to have to push some of the furniture a bit harder. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm very interested in this hutch. So what are you thinking? What's I'm the deal? I'm thinking 200 for the hutch and the tools. That would make about 250 250 for everything. Okay. I live in an 1880 farmhouse. It'll be perfect. Let's do it. It needs a new home. Sold. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Can I sell you all the stuff inside of it, too? Heck no. <laughs> This house is so jam-packed, I needed this space, so selling that hutch really helped us. Amazing day today. We did $13,002. It was non-stop. I think it was well over $6,000 just in trains. I'm hoping we have another beautiful day tomorrow so we can have just as big of a turnout. Before day two of the sale gets underway, Kari has gotten a hot tip from a customer. So she's up bright and early for an antique scavenger hunt with her trusty strongman, Haas. I'm here to meet Carrie. She inherited 50 acres. I'm hoping to find some treasures here. When you're done with the barn, feel free to, to look around and see what you find. Okay, sounds good. Look, you have to duck to get in the door. Wow. You can't even see to the other side. I know. Let's go upstairs. It is a treasure trove up here. Wow. These containers are kind of cool. I definitely want a couple of these. I'm gonna open some of these. You need some lawn ornaments? Maybe. Sweet. Look at the glass keys. That one's super cool. I want these. All these old boxes. There's a whole stack back here. There's another one. Another one. Oh! Look at these stools. Those are rad. There's two of them. The barn has so much stuff in it, we literally only scratched the surface in there. There's more over here. Is there? What is this? Check this out. That this could be a, a good chandelier. This is a chandelier waiting to happen. It's in good shape, too. It's just rusted. Is it old? It's old wheel. That's rad. Perfect. That's, that's super Love it. awesome. All right, let's roll out. <laughs> Wow, you guys did amazing. Look at this pile. I was overwhelmed. My brain was just going wild with ideas. I'm looking around, there's a lot of projects here. Yes. I'm thinking like 275 bucks. Would you go three? That Sold. sounds good. Sold. Thank, Thank you. you. I think I did great for 300. I got an awesome pile, tons of projects, and we had a lot of fun. The first day of the sale was a whirlwind of activity and treasures were sailing out the door. Jimmy was a diehard collector. There's still a ton of stuff to sell, like that roll top desk, which if we don't get moved to a higher traffic area, it's not gonna sell. This is the desk, guys. And where do you want this? Let's put it right where that hutch was. I think it's just getting lost in here. No, I agree. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, we'll take the first 15. Careful, this is a little icy. Good morning. My stepdad wasn't able to help us out again on day two, but I'm so grateful my dad is here. No one knows tools like he does, and he's doing a great job. He just jumps right in. Two bucks. 12 bucks. Help us work that and scrap. Working with the public and working with my daughter was, uh, was always fun. And inside the house, the girls are doing a great job with the Barbie collection. So everything's going to come up to $67. Perfect. They came at a really good price, so I bought them all. 
I'm interested in the uh, display cabinets. With everything in them? Uh, I don't think so. For this one and this one, two? 230. Do a little better? 225. Okay. 225? Sure. Awesome. I got it. Shut. Sure. And my help is needed outside the house to kickstart some sales. You guys want to buy a lawnmower? I do. <laughs> the lawnmower with uh, the plow will do it for 350. That the best you can do? How about 325? Yeah, 325 I can go with. Thanks, Thank sold. No problem. I just purchased a new house. It's on two acres, so I'm going to need something to mow that lawn. This will do great. It's day two of the sale. Kari has sold a ton of trains and tools, but there's still a lot left. It's a tight, jam-packed space, and the team is hoping to fill it up with customers and have nobody leave empty-handed. But the sale carries on without Kari as she heads to her warehouse to transform some scrap metal from her farm adventure into a stylish ceiling light. It was in really poor condition when I found it, very rusty and dirty. So what I've done is taken a wire brush to clean it up. I've oiled it down with vegetable oil and actually cured it in the hot sun like an old cast iron pan. I wiped off the excess oil and sealed it with three coats of shellac. Now it's ready to be wired. I picked up a do-it-yourself wiring kit from the hardware store and it's something anyone can install. I've chosen a cloth covered wire and a porcelain receptacle because all of the wires will be exposed on the chandelier and it'll tie this rustic piece together. Since this has six spokes, I'm using six receptacles. Luckily, when I ordered this kit, all the wires came pre-labeled, so all I need to do is put them together. The next step is to attach them to the chandelier. I think it's just about ready to be hung. I'd like to touch up the hook with a rusty brown spray paint just to make it a uniform color and it'll be ready to go. I found this rusted piece of farm equipment at a barn pick. I cleaned it up, wired it, added vintage style Edison light bulbs and turned it into a fantastic chandelier. I think it's perfect for my wine table. It's just been nonstop line. I've had people in line all day, both days. This one's 50, this one's 35, 25. Isn't she awesome? Today has flown by. I sold, I don't even know how many hundreds of Barbies. You want this one too? Yeah. <laughs> yes! We bought Barbie roller skating, Barbie exercise, Barbie brandy, just lots of Barbies. You're welcome. Cheryl, look at the lamp. My gosh, it's humongous. I think it would look nice in your house behind your couch. You do? Yes. We were asking $50 for it. Oh, but what's the discount today? 25% off. So that puts it roughly around $35. What do you think? It has mood lighting. Ooh, oh. just what I need. <laughs> I will. You sold? Yep, awesome. 35. All right. Thank you. We love this lamp because it's so unusual and it'll fit perfectly behind a sofa. I mean, it's beautiful. You never have to worry about putting your stuff away. Let me think about that. Huh? Okay. I would love to sell this to you. And I'll throw in something free. Maybe a clock. This is my mission to sell this desk. What do you think? 175. 190. Sold at 190, you're shaking your head. All right. Sold, woo, that's sold. 190. Yes. I really wanna sell these collections for Mike and Barb, so I'm willing to go below my usual day two 25% off discount. I'm ready to deal. So half would be 822. Um, what are you thinking? Saying 300. It's too low. I gotta do this family justice. 350. Too low. Yeah. Higher, higher. I can give you my best and final at $400. I'll take them all right now at 400. And that's about as best as I can do. Why don't you meet me in the middle at 450, and we'll we got a deal. 
425 is pretty close. All right, let's go. 425, let's go. it's the end of the sale. Do it. Sold. Yeah. Done. Right. Shake my hand too, would you please? <laughs> Were you stand by Barbie arms? I remember the dolls are okay. <laughs> this was a non-stop, action-packed sale. I think we're all a little beat up, but it was great. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> Can you believe how much is cleared out? It's amazing. A lot of the customers said they could not believe the collections here. So many things went to wonderful homes. People loved going through the tools. The trains were a huge hit. The dolls were a huge hit. Are you guys ready for the total? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we did $22,631. You gotta be kidding. No, isn't that great? Wow. Oh, <laughs> Thank you.